people, connect with people, and don't forget to hydrate. I need to bring my water bottle. I'm getting here. Doesn't even hurt at all. What? That's for you. Yeah, just for my lactose intolerance. Oh my god. Look at that. This smells so freaking. Can you smell this? Not sure how much you could even hear from that event. Uh, I ran into Charlotte and we were wearing matching outfits and it was super cute. Somehow my new ear piercing doesn't even hurt. And now I am at Yamashiro just waiting for the valet. So I'm safe in the car and I'm not moving and I'm in the park. I promise. I'm not gonna lie. Back to back to back events is a lot, but the only way I could make it work because it started at five and dinner was at 7.30 was to just back to back to back it. But you know what? We did it. And it feels really good to be out and about and seeing old friends I haven't seen in such a long time. It is such a beautiful night and we're on top of city in Los Angeles and I've never even dinner here and I'm really excited. We grew past by players were always falling. I know you need out sometimes, head on the glass by traffic lights. Us never felt so blind, so we take off in a maze and I drive in circles, going sick of the weather. We made it home. We? Why did I just say? I just literally spit on my upper lip. Did you see that dinner? I have never been to Yamashiro for food. I've only been there for like a like a brand event, and it was so fun. It was so nice. Um, it was my friend. Anika, who works for a skincare brand that I love, and then I got to meet uh, Dom for the first time, and she was incredible, and then Cece, who works with TikTok, and it was just a nice girl's dinner. It was very fun, um, delicious food, amazing sushi. If you are in LA or you're visiting LA, it's just a very fun, quintessential spot to visit. It was founded in 1914, which is so cool, and yeah, you just like drive up the hill, and it's like you're in a different world. It's just so far above the city that you have the view of everything. And it's just so peaceful and quiet. The food slaps. We had a um, sushi pizza. We had sushi tacos. Like it's it's like kind of a twist on things and unconventional good cocktails. It's just a fun spot. So I highly recommend if you're looking for a fun place to visit. Big things happened with the guest house today when I was gone. My landlords came and moved everything, the rest out of it. And they're going to do like an inspection and start painting and it's happening. So I really do need to focus this weekend on dreaming and scheming what I want the space to look like. I'm excited for a new era. I feel like after months of stagnation and really, really struggling to feel that I was aligned with my purpose, to feel really engaged in what I was doing, what I was working on and feeling like I was building something bigger, I feel like the breakthrough has finally happened. And things that I've been thinking of and dreaming of for literally years just seem to be like falling out of the sky opportunities for them to happen. So it feels really cool. It feels like a really exciting time. And at the same time, it feels different than I feel like it ever has before in that it's not like, I don't know. I don't feel like frenzied and I don't feel like, like I don't have like fear or scarcity mentality. I feel like I feel calm and centered and grounded. And I feel this weird non-attachment, which feels really cool. And that's that like if one of these things fell through all the really exciting things that are happening right now there's like a handful of them that if something didn't work out easy for me to say now right but I feel like I'd be okay if it didn't happen and I think that that's a big deal I think sometimes when we want something so badly we can get in our own way and we can unknowingly self-sabotage because it's so scary that we want it so bad that we're so afraid that if we don't get it we'll be so disappointed that we almost like make it harder for ourselves to do it so we have excuses or sometimes I think there's also a fear of success at play I think you can be afraid of failure and success for so many different reasons and I know that sounds crazy to be like why would I be afraid of being successful but it's very common like you there's a million reasons why you could be afraid of the success just as much as you are the failure and I think 
the main thing is that what unites that is fear, right? So I feel like the more, the more this makes sense to me, the more I get, like I read about it and stuff for years, but like truly is like fear and love. And love is doing things that you're passionate about. It's opening your heart to new experiences and new people and doing it for the very love of doing it or doing it because you feel like you have to, you feel called to, you feel like you can't not versus fear is like, that's a very expansive love and fear is very constrictive. Yeah. So I feel like I've been in a very constricted area, even though of course my relationship has been blossoming work and friendships, like everything's felt so overwhelming to me that I've almost just wanted to crawl under a rock and hide. And I know so many have, of us have felt that way over the past couple of years for very obvious reasons. So if you felt like that, I'm sending you so much love. And I'm just curious if you are feeling any expansion happening in this period, if you're feeling any growth or any excitement. Like I had a moment yesterday when I was, uh, obviously like I was talking to you guys yesterday. And I was like, I don't want to, I don't want to open packages. I want to be outside in the yard barefoot reading and just like, I just want to be, be free. And it felt so so good to me and in that moment I had this realization that life is not a destination happiness is not a destination it's all these millions of little moments every day that make up our life and I just want to enjoy and savor every moment and create spaciousness and remember that I have a choice like we always have a choice in some way shape or form and that's whether we shift our perspective on something like sometimes the situation doesn't have to change our perspective does and i think that that is a miracle that's often overlooked anyway all that to say if you are letting fear be the driver of your life i would just i would just look at that and focus on all the things that bring you joy and love that's why i think honestly i feel like my huge shift has been happening as I've been journaling again. And I used to journal, I've journaled religiously for years just because I had to, like it was the only, the pages sometimes were the only thing that could catch the thoughts and feelings I was having. I didn't have anyone to share them with when I was in abusive relationships. Like when things were happening that were so far outside my control, I really found solace in journaling. And I feel like as, even though my relationship's been expanding and so many beautiful things have been happening and I've done so much healing, I kind of lost that self-care practice that I had found that really anchored me. And I find that it you think, right, you don't have time for that. You have too much going on. The last thing you have time to do is that. But the weird part is that if you pour your energy into that, it refills you so much that you almost have more energy. Like you have more to give from the overflow to other people, to work, to passion projects. Anyway, these are all the things I'm realizing and it is literally... 11 32 p.m. and I just pulled in my driveway and I should probably go inside now oh but we also got this massive gift bag I don't think you can see it hi my car is so messy but I got this um gift bag from Orbe so we should probably go inside and open it and then I should also probably make you guys watch me take my makeup off because I was already I'd already told myself like well we're just gonna sleep with our makeup on tonight no I'm gonna commit to a serious skincare routine and I think I should commit to one brand I've like kind of done this but travels really messed me up I ah my ear piercing hurts so bad I just knocked it it wasn't hurting all night but then somebody hugged me ow now it's my hair is caught in it I have to go no one ever said this was the most flattering lighting all right let's open this thing I'm just very curious <laughs> to see what's inside this is my purse I just was carrying stuff in from the car and it made me realize how very very badly I need to clean out my car Badly. I had to apologize to all three valets that I encountered today. And I also, out of like embarrassment, asked them if it was the dirtiest car they've ever seen. And they all were kind and probably lied to me. Okay. So it's a duffel. And so Orbe was a legend. He passed away not too long ago. And um, yeah, he was just an icon in the field of hair worked with amazing designers and just was a visionary and an artist. And he's built such a beautiful brand, obviously one of my favorite brands uh, for hair. And anyway, uh, so this is like a little portrait of him. Oh, you can't see it. <laughs> uh, so they gave us this beautiful black duffel with this little like hang tag of his face. Um, they're just celebrating the brand as a whole. And then, oh, this is so soft, get out. Oh my gosh. So they did sweatshirts. And they have like a funny little thing. It's just like, ugh, this is just so cool. I'm really excited. I'm gonna be wearing this. I got, um, they let me pick what size. And so I got like a oversized, I got like an X, 
XXL because I want it to be so, but it's just so soft. It's a Bella and Canvas sweatshirt, which is really exciting. Um, oh, there's also a t-shirt. Okay, so there's a t-shirt version of the same thing. Here's what happened. Um, they ended up getting my massage time wrong. Well, first of all, I did, I did do the consultation for Botox and I decided just not, not yet. I'm gonna think about it um, a little more, but for just right now, I'm just, I don't know, I didn't feel comfortable with it today and I don't feel quite ready. I just, I don't wanna not be able to move my face. I feel like I'm a very expressive person and I don't wanna be frozen. I wanna be able to like show, I don't, I guess I wouldn't mind not being able to do some of it, but now like doing it, I'm like, I just really feel like I'm such an expressive person and I'm worried that I won't be able to like show sympathy to friends if I don't make an expression and I won't be able to show excitement, you know? And I know that it's not always like that. So I think we had talked about what she said to do is to do like baby Botox. And she said the deal with that is you do a lot less, but you might have to come in a lot more. So normally I think Botox lasts like, I think they say between like three and six months, which is kind of like a big gap. But um, for me, she was saying if I did the baby, I might have to come in like every couple months, which I'm sure would get quite expensive. So anyway, I just feel like if the time is right, I'll know it. But for now, next order of business. Oh, so then my massage, the, they messed up the times and it was supposed to be at 11 and they didn't have me down to like afternoon. And I didn't wanna just like sit there because I actually have a meeting here in a little bit. I had stuff to do at home. Um, yeah, I just have a lot of work to do. So I just didn't think that that was the best use of my time. So I just told them like, thanks so much. Like your facility was beautiful but like this timing's just not gonna work. And they were so sweet. They actually just emailed me and were like, we're so sorry for your experience. We'd love to have you back. And like they offered me some complimentary services and I just thought that was like above and beyond and so kind. And so I think I'll probably go back and check it out if you are, if you do live in LA. I've heard amazing things about the Brentwood location and now this is the new Culver City location. And I, uh, we stopped at the little coffee shop before, but there's so much happening around Culver City. I really love the area. I actually lived there right before I moved to this house. And it's just a cool area. So if you are looking for a place to treat yourself um, to something nice like that, I would recommend it. It was really beautiful and I, would totally go back but anyway that's why my coverage there got cut short not that you're probably that invested but um yeah i have to do some emails and stuff my computer was dying so it's charging i have to like sign some contracts and um just do some admin stuff and then i have a zoom meeting uh just a little bit later and then i thought we could uh do this massive pr unboxing look how high the boxes i've gotten there's also some below so since i was out of town a bit uh has piled up and so it's some stuff for jobs that i'm working on some stuff for um d just randomly were sent like pr boxes some things i ordered just for household stuff so i've got to just go through those but i thought it'd be fun to just do like a little chatty unboxing together and then i have i had i don't know i did get ran a random comment on a video i guess it was a while back now just saying like what is it that you do for work like and i think that that's a very fair question so if you guys are ever curious about that i can go more into depth on that but i currently work as a content creator um i was doing more modeling stuff before the pandemic and now i do it occasionally like i've done like a handful this year not a ton um and i also do creative consulting for clients um i just have like right now i just have one client doing that for but that was what i did full-time before i started moving into content creation full-time um yeah and so i just create a lot of content here on youtube obviously and um my main thing was instagram but now it's actually kind of taken over to be TikTok a little bit and i also then sometimes create content for brands like it's not always shared on my platform so i also do because i was a creative director before and i worked as a prop stylist so i have a lot of experience in content creation. So sometimes I'll create content for brands that you guys, if you're following me on the other channels, may not even see that the brands will contract me to create content for their social media. They'll just outsource it to me to create like a package of videos that they can use on their own social media for certain different things. So I have a few of those projects in the works as well. And generally I will be in them but there have been like some occasions where they're just product focused and I'm not in them or um, occasionally like I'll have someone else be the focal point of that. Uh, but I haven't done as many of those projects. Previously when I was doing more creative direction, um, right now I'm doing more consulting than actual physical creative direction. But when I would do 
creative direction. I would cast the uh, people that would be in it. I would secure the location, figure out like everything, do like a shot list and pull the mood boards and like make sure the client was getting what they needed. And I would direct the photographer and the talent and everyone else on set, whether that was like hair and makeup or stylists or just like even a PA or an assistant on set, et cetera. So I was like a bigger scale. So now I kind of just do it a little bit smaller scale just for myself, which gives me a lot more flexibility. I really did like working with clients, but it's just a whole nother beast. And during the pandemic, obviously a lot of production shut down. So a lot of companies that I was already working with, they weren't able to be on set and have people together in those ways. And so they looked to creators that were already familiar with the brand and had the ability to create that level of content at home. So I was able to create website and images for some brands that they would use on their website or not even video. They would sometimes just use them as their e-com if they couldn't shoot. So it's been an interesting couple of years and how much that has changed. And now obviously the creator economy is just boomed. There's so many more creators now because of TikTok, etc. And so, yeah, it's just really inspiring and really cool. And I have no idea where what direction things are going in, but I definitely feel called to pursue some different areas coming up. And like, obviously I've mentioned the podcast and I have no idea what other things I'm interested in possibly doing some kind of like property or real estate thing. I'm interested in writing more. I'm interested in getting back to some of the things that I moved to LA for. Um, which are things I haven't been pursuing a ton lately. So I'm not sure, but I'm definitely open to other things. But uh, in a nutshell, I do a lot of different things that kind of are all in the same arena. So as far as like actual income streams, I have several. And I feel like most people can and should have several. I think it just allows for diversity. It allows for more security. And as long as you're not, you know, completely burning yourself out, I think it can be really creatively inspiring and challenging to kind of switch hats and switch modes. And I think it's really cool to have something that you do on the side of like your main work. There's just, yeah, everyone is different, but I think it's really cool that we live in a society now that where things have changed, where you're not just working at one company for your whole life and you can build things for yourself and you can collaborate with other people and you can figure out that beautiful intersection between where your passions and your skills and the needs of the world all intersect. And that's kind of where I am right now. And I think a lot of people are really craving that less work-life balance and more like no separation between work and life in a way that is sustainable for them. So like the things they're creating are an extension of them or feel natural to them. And it's not like um, how it used to be traditionally. And so I think we're as a society kind of figuring out what that looks like now, but I don't know if that the pandemic has changed anything for you guys, or, you know, if you're in a time in your life where you've thought about making a career shift, I find it very inspiring when people honor their dreams and go back to school to do different things or take a chance on doing different things. And it can be very, very scary. So if you guys ever want to talk more about what it looks like to be freelance, I'm in a position now where, really trying to get everything in order. I'm with a new bookkeeper and just trying to make sure that everything is done in a sustainable, good way, do better planning, just be a little bit more, I guess, responsible so that I know what I have, so I know what I can do with it because I've got some th projects I really want to do myself that I'm going to need to self-fund. So anyway, that was a very long-winded answer and I just saw that my plants are looking bad, so let's water them. I'm wearing my little Orbe sweatshirt that I got at the event last night. I was going through that bag with you guys when the camera died and I was just like, oh, I'm too tired for it. And also, I still have my makeup on. I'm <laughs> um, I had dinner with my friend that works for a skincare line last night. And she's like, we got to get you out of this. Like, we need to create a challenge where you check in with me. And I know you like you use like the same products every day and you just do it for three weeks or a month or something. And I'm like, I think I might actually do that. There, I obviously have my favorite products and I feel like as I've been using them, there are certain things that I like more than others and that I would stick with, but they kind of all from all from different brands. But I think to get my skin to it, like it would just be nice to see what would happen if I was consistent for a long period of time. Travel really throws me off. And I feel like the second I get into a good habit, it's done again. I also use this old Soma like filtered water pitcher as my plant watering thing right now because I don't have another one. Oh, news about the blowout. I feel like it really lasted and I love the way it's settled in. I think it's, I think I like love this one single bend. I just think it looks really good and I haven't brushed it today, obvi. This ear is also really hurting. Um, just like when it gets knocked or touched, like laying down on it hurt last night and then I got a hug today and they knocked it and it was like, oh. Let's also water these little babies. I really need to get that app. 
where it tells you how often to water them because this guy's turning yellow. I've been a bad plant mom lately. Every day I've been looking at them like, oh crap, I need to get them water them. And then my ADD starts raging and I forget. I'm sorry guys. Oh no, oh no. Look how sad she is. They're normally all, oh no. Guys, I don't know, I'm nervous. I don't know if she's gonna come back from this. I didn't realize how bad it was. Oh gosh, I'm so sad and so nervous about this. Shoot, this is not good. This guy's a little yellow too. This one, I think this one needs to go anyway. I have kept these plants up for years. This is not good. You know what? We're working on self-compassion. We're working on self-forgiveness. Watering our plants. We're watering our souls. This is so weird. Some of them retain the moisture in the soil so much better than others. And I wonder if it's the soil or the plant type. I never quite understood that. How some I'll water like every two weeks and the soil's still moist. You know what? We need to get that plant nap. I've been meaning to get that and I think today's the day. I keep talking about it. One thing I don't love about myself, <laughs> I love myself, but one thing that I would love to improve upon is that I don't, I like think about things and talk about things and I don't take action. And it's like some people are like, oh, I need to water the plant. They get up and water. I'm always like, mm, I'll put that on my to-do list. <laughs> it's like, you could have done it in the time it would take to write it down on your list. You could have had it done. Am I wrong? <sighs> I'm sorry, guys. So listen, don't be mad at me. I'm gonna do a couple of these boxes, but I'm realizing how freaking long this video is. So I'm gonna do this as a two-parter. So I'm just literally gonna grab the first couple I see. Ooh, Mercier box. What's this say? Yes, I am a monster. I'm so excited to rip this thing to shreds. Look, I'm gonna go the first of all. Eh. I have a fun story with Sugarfina. Um, I've been a fan of the brand forever and I used to do styling, like um, social media content for them, like back in the day, like back when I was first starting my own little agency doing social media content, they like gave me a break and they were so kind and they donated candy to like events I was working at cause I like worked um, on these like creative events and women's conferences and stuff like that. And they were always so generous. And now, first of all, their stuff's freaking fire and I love it. Second of all, yeah, they sent me this box. Oh my God, I'm just really excited about it. Okay. So it's, um, they have new gummy bears. Where did the, okay, here we go. So they sent this box of their new rosé gummy bears. Where did that thing go? Oh my God, no, they're straw strawberry champagne. Okay, so here's a fun fact. This is such a cute gift to give people. If, you, if you've got, you know your basic little friends that are like rosé obsessed, champagne obsessed, well that's me too. But they have, um, I am so excited about, oh my God, I totally forgot about chocolates yesterday. I still have three of the chocolates I bought yesterday, like in my purse. It is gonna be such a good night. I'm just excited, okay? I have some treats in the house. I feel like I haven't had any groceries forever and not that these are groceries. I'm just gonna move on because I'm digging myself in deeper. Okay, uh, strawberry champagne bears, champagne bears, and Venus strawberries in little containers, but these are just the cutest gifts. They have so many beautiful things if you haven't heard of Sugarfina. I just love it. But their champagne bears are made with um, Dom Perignon vintage, like champagne. Like they're so fancy, they're very cute. It would be a very cute little like, will you be my bridesmaid gift idea? Oh my God, cute. And then they sent these in the little champagne bottles. These would be the gifts. This would be so freaking cute. Okay, so that one is, um, I think they're regular and this is their strawberry champagne bears, which I can't freaking wait. I'm just really excited about this and every, I wanna eat one, it's okay, it so bad right now, but I'm also like, I should wait till after dinner. Am I a child who's parenting itself? Genuinely, I just don't wanna like put pure sugar into my body when I'm extremely hungry. Like I wanna put nutrition in there first and then have this. But isn't gelatin like protein? <laughs> oh my God, we're gonna do it, I'm so excited. A fun fact about Sugarfina is I once got to go to their factory and watch them like, so they get all these expensive Italian candies or like actually from all around the world. They import them from very fancy places and then like get their own made too, but like from those very fancy places. And they um, like stack everything perfectly. So if you get like a box of like the Robin's eggs, like they're always stacked like in a perfect way. Like they're like boxed by hand very specially here in LA. The last time I went, they're probably, maybe they're not anymore, but they would get sent these things in bulk and then they would package them like very carefully. I felt like I was at Willy Wonka's freaking chocolate factory when I went. Oh, isn't that such a satisfying? Oh my God, it smells so unfreaking real. Look at, as if to say it's okay, one little bear, one little freaking bear is resting on the top. <gasps> I squeaked and it sounded like a chalkboard. 
What's like one of those sounds that makes you like this literally just sounded like nails on a chalkboard. Comment below and tell me something, a sound that makes you want to cringe and just lose it. Oh, I'm not being dramatic. I'm serious. They are that good. Okay, these are unreal. They're really unreal. Oh, 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 oh. Oh my God, I can't wait for Sparky to wake up so I can make him eat one. Oh my God. Okay. Oh my God. I'm not done. I'm not done. I want to try the Venus strawberries. We should try these two. I don't even know what they are. Okay. I'm going to read you the description because it's so extra. A sweet mythical masterpiece. Divine freeze dried strawberries. Oh, Divine freeze dried strawberries wrapped in a creamy white chocolate and coated with a sweet candy shell. All right. Don't threaten me with a good time, Sugar Fina. I will say these gel nails are not conducive to peeling candy wrappers. Oh, I'm gonna eat the small one. Okay, I'll eat it in a bite so that you can still see what's inside. Uh -uh. Oh, oh hell. Come on, focus, let him see. Come on, oh. Let's put this little dude off here, here you go. Here you go. Wait, stop, show them. Oh yeah, I'm so happy. Um, I'm so simple, really. This is uh, from I Buy Direct. Every vision of you, clever. Uh, I have no idea what's in here. I wonder if it's like, I don't know. I'm assuming it's glasses because of the name. All right. Uh, fall call, I don't get what's going on, but there's glasses, let's try them on. I was trying to read the message and read it to you and I was like, I don't get it, so. <laughs> uh, do you think they're gonna be sunnies or regular glasses? Because I know that I, the only thing I know about this brand is that they did have like blue light glasses, but I really am a sunglass girl. They're sunglasses because I just probably should wear blue light. Do you guys wear blue light glasses? If you do, please tell me if you have any. <gasps> they are. I think they even are blue light blocking because when I look at the camera, holy moly, when I look at the camera right now, like the screen, um, hold on. So I'm looking at you guys. I'm looking at the screen now and whoa, it, the screen looks dark like. Oh my, let me look at my phone. The furthest away from me it usually ever is, if I'm honest. No, I sleep with it outside of my room. I do. Yeah, it's definitely doing something weird. Okay, these are cute. These are cute. Okay. I buy direct. I buy direct. Oh, cute. This is so cute. Look at this new little case. This case is cute. Okay, these are glasses, glasses. And I don't, I don't, I don't know if I'm a glasses, glasses girl. But I do like the idea of having blue light blocking glasses. Maybe they aren't. These might just actually be regular glasses. Oh, this is nice. They say for every order placed, we donate one pair of glasses to someone in need. So you buy one, get one. We love a BOGO, especially when it's for a good cause. This is a progressive lens? Shut up. What? What's a progressive lens? What does this mean? What is this glasses? Listen, I don't know. Is it one of those things where like, if it's bright out, it makes it into a sunglass? Oh my God, I'm cute. What's happening? <gasps> Okay, I'm sorry, but I'm kind of cute with these glasses. Can this be a thing? Wow, who is she? Now we have my love, Laura Mercier. They always have these little handwritten notes and it makes me feel very special. The Rose Glow, Rose Glow Collection, Summer 2022. <gasps> California billions. There's like a billion dollar lottery drawing tonight. So I have to go because Sparky is here and he was napping and he just woke up and told me we have to go buy tickets. Well, yeah, anyway, but let's see what's in here. This is also important. <gasps> okay, so it's a rose glow collection. Everything looks so beautiful. And then there's a wine, which, oh my God, they gave me a tiny wine. Look how cute. It's like blushes that match rose. Okay, I'm just getting more basic by the moment. This whole thing is rose season and I don't even care. Is this a powder blush or is it? I want to know. These look stunning. We're just going to open one because we don't have time to do anything else right now. But look, <gasps> okay, I'm sorry, but this is freaking beautiful. Look at it. It's stunning. It's powder because I wasn't sure if it was like a cream or powder. It's definitely a powder. This one is called Peach Shimmer. Actually, this looks like a really beautiful highlighter. So I do think we should do another makeup video soon, like a better one than the interesting one I pumped out the other day. 
So if you guys do want more of that, let me know. I'm very interested in doing beauty stuff, but I just feel like I don't, I'm not known for that. So I'm always kind of like nervous if anyone cares, but who cares? I should do it if it brings joy to me. Um, yeah, there's other beautiful shades. <gasps> and there is a little mini bottle of wine, which I think I'm gonna put in the fridge right now. Go bottle, buy a lottery ticket, pour that glass of wine, eat it with the gummies, and wait to become a billionaire. JK. But I still think it's fun to go do that and just why not? But um, okay, I have to go. I know that I had one more bottle. Well, let's just see what it is. Okay, fine. We just gotta go. Why can't I ever leave you? This is why. <laughs> this is why I'm so sad when I don't do videos because I really love. I really love it. Okay. I, I like read the note and I still don't get it. So we're just gonna go in. Pura sense. <gasps> oh, cool! It's like a little scent thing. <gasps> what? I've never heard of this. Is it a plug-in scent thing that's like fancy? Okay, Glade plug-in upgrade. Pura, Pura? Pfft, don't know, but these look bomb. Guy Fox and Kenneth Cole. Crushed pineapple, lavender, and musk. And a tea, like a patchouli, basil, geranium one. These look sexy, like kind of masculine fragrances. Ooh, we're gonna give this a try. I'm super excited about this. I just really, okay, my dream in life is for my home to have like a signature scent that people just expect when they come here. Maybe I could like make my own candle or private label it or something. And then when they leave, they get, I'll, I would like send a little mini candle of them home so they can always remember what it felt like to be at my house, which sounds a little self-important now that I'm saying it out loud. But my intention for it is to just create a space of like love and healing where people feel like welcome and I can serve them teas and things they love and they're happy and cozy. I'm gonna go. Thanks so much for watching. If you guys are, uh, well, I don't imagine anyone new here would have made it this long, but if you are new here and you did make it this long, comment below because you deserve an award. And if you are a returning BFF, thanks for being here. I'm really excited to share some stuff that's coming up. And I just want to get back into the groove here and then I will poll you guys because I may ask for your help on certain things. And um, I have another idea for that. Anyway, okay, I'll catch you guys next time. We'll chat more. Much love. I hope that you guys are all taking good care of yourselves.